of all, invite my panelist, uh, Dr. Amarnath, Senior Consultant, Department of Radiation Oncology. In uh, sir, sir is not here. Doctor, Dr. Amarnath is not here. Uh, Dr. Amarnath is here. Okay. Ajay, he has joined. Okay, okay. Uh, he is there. Dr. Amarnath, can you please unmute yourself? I think Dr. Am I know, I saw Dr. Amarnath. Amarnath is... Yeah, he had said that he might not be able to join. Please unmute yourself, sir. I think all the panelists, for the interest of time, if you can log in and uh, unmute as it's required, and we can switch on the video so that they are aware. And, uh, is Dr. Amarnath here, sir? Hello? Please check with others. He already informed me he is not able to join. Okay, okay. Uh, Dr. Anunla, I can see sir is here. Uh, yes. He's a consultant in the Department of Radiation Oncology in MBR Cancer Center and Research Institute in Kerala. Dr. Parthasatri uh, Sarthi Bhattacharya, Radiation Oncologist at uh, Mahatma Gandhi Cancer Institute. Is Dr. Parthasatri here? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, Dr. Prahlad Yathiraj, Associate Consultant, Head and Neck uh, Skull Based Surgery, Department of Radiation Oncology, Rela Hospital, Chennai. Hi, I'm Prahlad. here. Yeah, I'm here. Thank you. Uh, I don't know why uh, it says uh, skull based surgeon. I'm not a surgeon, but I was on the website long time ago. <laughs> <I was laughs> Sorry for that. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Sanjukta Padi, uh, Associate Professor, Department of Radiation Oncology uh, from Acharya Haryar Postgraduate Institute of Cancer, Katak. Is Dr. Padi here? I am here. Good evening, all. I am here. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Karan. Thanks for joining. Uh, Dr. Shiv Shankar Kotni, Professor, Department of Radiation Oncology, GSL Medical College, Rajamandri, Andhra Pradesh. Dr. Shiv Shankar, sir, are you here? Uh, doctor, uh, moving on, Dr. Venkat Krishna, radiation oncologist at uh, Mahatma Gandhi Cancer Hospital Research Institute, Vizag. I'm here. Welcome, sir. Thank you for joining. Uh, Dr. Vinay Muttagi, Senior Consultant, Department of Radiation Oncology, HCG Bangalore. Is Dr. Vinay here? I'm in. I'm in. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thanks for joining. Uh, so, we'll begin with the uh, panel discussion now. I hope you all can uh, see my screen. Yeah. All so, panelists are requested to keep their video and uh, on and keep themselves unmuted. So, the, there will be smooth panel discussion. Let's start, Vijay. Yes. Uh, so, the panel discussion for today is management of biochemical recurrence post radical radiotherapy for prostate cancer. There is definitely uh, quite a bit of evidence uh, for the management of such a situation, but uh, there is even more robust evidence when we look at biochemical recurrence post-radical prostatectomy than radiotherapy. So whatever maximum uh, evidence that I could find online and uh, uh, with my peers and my department at, uh, in Apollo, I could get all, them to, all of them together. So what is the biochemical recurrence? Local therapy for uh, CA prostate, either prostatectomy or radiation is curative in many situations, but in about 27 to 53% of the times, sorry. Yeah, so about 27 to 53% of the times, uh, there's a biochemical recurrence. It is estimated that within 10 years, about 40% post RP and about 50% post RT patients have biochemical recurrence. It does the uh, biochemical recurrence does not impact uh, the overall survival or the patient's quality of life. Need not impact the patient's quality of life. The idea of treating a biochemical re recurrence is that the choosing therapy uh, should have a balance between the the coming QL of the patient and also avoid over treating a patient. So it is very important to assess all the pathological features, biochemical features and the time of recurrence before we go ahead and treat the patient. 
This is uh, one of our uh, patients, a 74-year-old man. He's uh, with comorbidities, diabetes and hypertensive. He had uh, uh, presented with increased frequency of urination for about six months. Ultrasound pelvis done outside showed prostatomegaly. HP was suggestive of uh, prostatic adenocarcinoma, Gleason score 5 plus 3. On presentation, PSA was 28. Uh, MRI showed uh, prostatomegaly with a lesion uh, involving the capsule and also the seminal vesicles, the T3B. So, uh, just an added information on this HP, there are uh, 8 out of uh, 12 cores were positive. The patient received two doses of uh, neoadjuvant hormonal therapy, that is with injection luprolite. First dose was given a monthly dose and the second was given a three-monthly dose. Then the serum PSA after the neoadjuvant hormonal therapy had come down to four. Then we have treated him with uh, EBRT, obviously elderly uh, gentleman with comorbidity. So this is, was an e easier and more sensible way to go. Treated with EBRT three years back, he received 65 grain, 26 fractions at 50 centigrade per fraction in both, to both the prostate and seminal vesicles. And we also did a 200 centigrade per fraction uh, treatment to the pelvic nose total loss of 50 grain. The serum PSA post RT was 0.56. The ADT was continued along with RT and also adjuvant for a total duration of about 24 months. The NADR PSA during this 24 months was 0.14. And uh, the PSA presently now uh, is So first and foremost, uh, defining a biochemical recurrence. I think uh, Dr. Arun also can uh, take over. Yeah, thanks, uh, Ready, I think. Uh... The definition of biochemical recurrence, as we all know, differs between what happens in a post-RP situation as well as in a post-RT situation. In a post-RT situation, the most common definition is what is otherwise known as the Phoenix definition, which is proposed by the Astro and later uh, it was published by the Macrosh group in around 2006, I think. Yeah. So uh, as we all know, Nadir plus uh, two, that is the definition of biochemical recurrence. So this particular gentleman, uh, whose natural of PSA was around 0.14 or 0.16, now has a PSA of 4 at this point of time. So yeah. definitely he comes under the definition of uh, biochemical recurrence. I think we will look into the further workup. The only other yeah. comment, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure you have your own reasons to for that particular schedule. Uh, when we used to do moderate hyperfractionation, the schedule usually will come to around 70 gray in 28 fraction. So I think we have stopped here at around 65 gray. So... So that was equal to around 74 or so 72 or 74, if I remember correctly. The yeah. EQD2 was. Okay. No, that's, that's just a comment. I mean, it's easy to be evaluate something retrospectively. So, that was something. Yes. We will go ahead with your role. Yes. So, defining a biochemical recurrence it depends on whether, like Karun Lal sir said, whether, depends on whether it's phosphatectomy or radiation. After phosphatectomy, just, just for information, uh, the PSA usually falls to undetectable levels and the Biochemical recurrence is defined as two consecutive PSA values higher than 0.2. So much lower uh, reference value that we have for prostatectomy. Post RT, there are two criteria. There's uh, Astro criteria and also there's a Phoenix criteria. Like Arun Lal said, Phoenix criteria is what we all follow to define biochemical PSA increase greater than or equal to 2 nanogram per m as the NADR PSA value. So uh, coming to PSA bounds, Dr. Parthasatri, sir, uh, can you comment on PSA bounds? And if you have seen any cases. Yeah, sure. Uh, PSA bounce is actually a, a phenomenon in which we see a, a sudden uh, rise in the PSA. So this rise in the PSA is supposed uh, not due to the disease process as such, but uh, um, it's a more of a cell-mediated immunity in which um, probably uh, due to cell kill by the, uh, during the radiation, uh, so he experienced a, a rise in the uh, the PSA above and beyond the uh, the level uh, the nadri value. So after uh, receiving his radiation, his PSA is supposed to drop uh, within a period of uh, gradually over a period of year year and a half to two years. But uh, during the process uh, during the process of drop, we see sudden uh, spike in the uh, bounce. So the duration of the bounce, how many days the bounce will be. Uh, is uh, nothing much of that uh, sort is known, but we should know that uh, PSA bounce exists 
and uh, it is uh, also uh, wise to take a decision based uh, not on the bounds but uh, over and above the finish definition of two, uh, two, two nanograms. So if if the we, we should al always think about the bounds phenomenon, but uh, as such we should also have the finish definition of a recurrence back in the back of the mind uh, while uh, we uh, think of any recurrence in the prostate or something else. So uh, the bounds. Uh, as such, uh, gives an idea. He, we have something that uh, the immunity process uh, is trying to kill the cancer cells, and um, the PSA is uh, transient rise in the PSA is there, which is not uh, very much specific for the disease process as such. Yes, sir. thank you so much for that. So, uh, as rightly said, PSA bounce is something that we need to be aware of, and. Uh, Based on this, we should not conclude a, conclude, come to a conclusion that it's a recurrence and start treating the patient. So there is this meta-analysis on PSA bounce post radiotherapy. So the rate of bounce, according to this study, in the meta-analysis, it was found that the rate of bounce, it happens around 30%. The amplitude was around 1.3. Time to occurrence of bounce was 18 months, which again, sir, has mentioned uh, correctly. Nadir value was 0.5. Time to nadir was about 33 months. So the factors affecting the PSA bounds, the most uh, the most important factor was the radiotherapy modality that was used. So it is found to be more common when HDR brachytherapy was used. Of course, age and risk classification. High risk patients have a higher propensity to have a, a PSA bound. So now that we have concluded that this patient has a biochemical recurrence, his PSA right now is four, and his added PSA was one above four. Uh, next question, when do you decide to evaluate the clinical reference? Uh, can I have Dr. Pralad Yathiraj answering this? Yeah, uh, it's not wrong to uh, go for an imaging right now. PSMA PET scan would be the best uh, imaging ID. Um, once you're confirmed that there are two successful types <laughs> of PSA, it's not wrong to go for imaging. Yes, sir, that's true. So evaluation of the recurrence, biochemical recurrence alone is not an indicator, like I mentioned before, of overall survival or the prostate cancer specific survival. Moving treatment for clinical recurrence on an average, DCR uh, exceeds the efficacy of clinical medicine by eight years in RP and seven years by primary definitive RP. These are older studies, but that is a very long duration that they are considering. So we have to consider the factors which such as assess the patient's risk of developing a local or a metastatic recurrence. So what are these factors? There are pre- and post-treatment clinical pathological uh, uh, prognostic factors. Uh, moving to Dr. Venkat Krishna, sir, yeah. in this situation, would you consider any of these factors or would you go ahead, even if the patient is asymptomatic, just by diagnosing the PCR before and evaluate? So I would definitely consider the PSA doubling time. So yes. if the PSA doubling time is uh, more than one year, I would still wait rather than not imaging the patient. So another thing is if it's Gleason score earlier, if it's more than eight, he's supposed to be in a higher risk. So I would tend to evaluate these patients who have a Gleason score more than eight. Yes, that's true. So that is very correctly mentioned. PSA doubling time is one of the most uh, important pro uh, prognostic factors. <laughs> Part of value most commonly used and some of the, most of the guidelines also suggest is less than six months versus more than six months. Suggest 10 months as a cutoff. But what we use is usually uses six months and a PSA velocity of more than two nanogram per ml. So these are some of the factors. But in this situation, in this patient, because it is a T3B lesion, pathological features, PSA was uh, more than 20. Um, and uh, the PSA doubling time is what I didn't mention before, but within a period of about six months, the PSA has gone from 1.5 to 4. So all these factors uh, tell us that this patient is high risk for a local recurrence or even for a metastatic recurrence. So evaluation is important. So for a BCR after RT, PSA doubling time of less than three months is the highest prognostic factor, clinical stage T3B and higher, Gleason score high, and a BCR within three years of RT. Uh, Dr. Sanyukta, what would be the choice of investigations would you use for uh, evaluating the record? Sir, as I already mentioned about PSMA PET, anything else that you would look at? 
this colon plate will also is, is equal uh, it will be helpful again uh, prostatic biopsy i would like to go for and uh, pet has already ruled out the metastasis i, I hope so it's a, if it's a local recurrence then i will go for prostatic biopsy and uh, that's all okay. thank you so this colon plate is also equally effective in terms of uh, uh when you compare it to psma pet but because the panel discussion is about local reference i would i want to mention about local reference only so like madam said biopsy is a major predictor of outcome there is also evidence which says that uh in a negative and positive biopsy also there is uh you know there is a difference in total outcome in overall survival as well apart from psma pet colon pet for metastatic disease biopsy for local recurrence another important uh, uh, imaging modality that we can use is a multi parameter mri can yeah. yeah so dynamic mri or a multi parametric mri will help us to evaluate local recurrence largely and it also can differentiate when it whether it is a post op change or whether it is a recurrence so this gives us a very good idea about where our recurrence lies So, Madam was also mentioning about role of biopsy in, in uh, local recurrence. So, I'll just go ahead and talk about this. So, there is uh, a study which showed which showed the outcomes following a negative prostate biopsy. So, in this patients underwent biopsy forty one months after radiation. They were followed for a maximum of about five years. Thirty two patients, that is forty three patients of them, developed metastasis and fifteen percent died of prostate cancer. Five of the nine patients with sequential uh, biopsies had a positive second biopsy so what the study is trying to say is they, in this study they have done sequential biopsies post rt till the time of recurrence but in our situation especially when there is a high risk disease and a t3p disease you say is for patient is not really symptomatic for any metastasis when you are moving more towards having a local recurrence a prostate biopsy can go a long way in helping us decide what type of treatment that we can use whether the recurrence is the gleason score of the recurrence has uh, Uh, change, you know, it will help us a lot in uh, our future. So the conclusion of the study is: patients with PSA recurrence and a negative post-radiation biopsy have a high chance of persistent local disease progression and death from prostate cancer. So this also we have discussed the evaluation of a metastatic recurrence. Uh, the standard of care, as mentioned. <laughs> the guidelines is bone scan along with abdominal pelvic ct but nowadays most of us, all of us use uh, pet ct colin pet ct has very good sensitivity and specificity specificity but availability and price is an issue fdg pet also you know when you don't have a psma pet fdg pet also is very helpful especially in high grade some situations where the psa is not very high that in this situation is for but you know the patient might end up having a florid metastatic disease there is also a possibility of transformation of the adenocarcinoma to a small cell or having a portion of small cell which does not allow the psa to rise so in that situation also an fdg pet is very very helpful uh the may scan as all you know as all of you know very high sensitivity 76% 100% specificity negative predictive value of 90% and a positive predictive value of close to 100% So this problem I would just want to mention. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please. Uh, doctor, Doctor Amanath here. There is a yes, NIF uh, PET scan for uh, bone metastasis. That is the reason one. And one another thing is this F18 uh, based PSM PET is more sensitive than gallium based PSM PET. And but you need to have both PSM PET as well as the ABG PET to assess as you said the higher grade and the well differentiated ones. Okay. Point noted. Thank you. So, what are the treatment options for uh, local recurrence that you can think of, Doctor Venkat? So, the options uh, available for these patients would be post radiation would be a radical prostatectomy. We can uh, think of other options like uh, cryotherapy as well as HIFU. But uh, we need to choose uh, which is the right uh, choice for these patients. So. If the for the radical prostatectomy, I think there are uh, certain criteria how we need to choose the patients that their uh, life expectancy should be like more than ten uh, years, and uh, see that their comorbidities are taken care of, and uh, such patients can be chosen for radical prostatectomy. 
So cryotherapy can be another option as well as uh, HIFU is a recent option where we can do a thermal ablation for the local difference. So uh, before I thank you for that, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you for that, sir. Before I move on, I would like to mention that this patient had a local no metastatic recurrence. His head was negative, but uh, there's a focal lesion in one of the lobes of the prostate. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the treatment options for a local recurrence, radical prostatectomy, radiation can be continued. But radical prostatectomy comes a little morbidity. I think it is done with the expertise, the expertise is available. Uh, it's a morbid procedure. We can end up with fistulas and inner incontinence and quality of life issues, you know, that can come compromise. So it needs to the patient's yeah, yeah, that's one thing. So the other what are these uh, like cryotherapy, IFU, whatever, it's just evolving, we don't know. There's no clear cut uh, management guidelines uh, post uh, our team. To the current. Yes. I think all you totally agree. Yes, sir. But I totally agree, sir. So there is some disturbance if somebody can just uh, mute it. Not if uh, there is some dis uh, disturbance in the sound. Okay. okay, so these are the treatment options for local recurrence uh, radical prostatectomy, brachytherapy, radiation with SBRT, whether it's protein or whole prostate. Uh, you think the therapy yes, will deliver the desired dose, lethal dose? Post so that's what, sir. I'll come. So I'm going to elaborate each of these with evidence, sir. Then we can okay. discuss about it. Okay. Uh, uh, excuse me. Uh, yes. I am Dr. Kumar Swami. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, initially, when in your presentation, you said patient is not suitable for the surgery. Yes, sir. Morbid condition. Then yes, sir. How is it feasible now? No, no, sir. I'm not talking about radial, radical prostatectomy being feasible in this patient. I'm talking about options of treatment, post-radiation, biochemical difference. Then each of these uh, separate options, I will discuss it at length. For this patient, we did not do radical prostatectomy. We just did re-radiation and continuing with ADT. Thank you. Okay. So options for metastatic recurrence, and there is also, I just put this in the last, there is also option of uh, observation. So Amarnath sir, if you can continue about radical prostatectomy because you were talking before, but uh, there's a disturbance in the voice. What do you think no, about no, radical prostatectomy? Radical prostatectomy, prostatectomy comes with a lot of morbidity, you know, even incontinence, fistulas, and all those things. It has been done uh, where the expertise is available, the person who's seen, I mean, experienced in doing such a procedure and managing the complications thereof. That's what I was trying to impress upon. Otherwise, uh, we have a cryotherapy, we have IFO, uh, like you mentioned, but uh, none of these pro procedures, you know, which uh, is too proof. I mean, Gives us a desired results. Oh, you can, cannot expect a desired outcome. That's the thing. Yes. Especially in a post occupation. And brachytherapy also, you can't deliver the uh, say big lethal dose, you know. Already have delivered yes. a day. And what dose are going to deliver? That's another issue. Uh, these are the issues to be addressed. I you said observation in what patients and what set, set, subset of patients you like to observe. That's another thing. Okay. Okay, sir. So I'll get there, sir. So when you talk about radical prostatectomy, like Amanath sir has mentioned. Uh, it has very good results in terms of, uh, uh, you know, taking care of the biochemical recurrence. The B-free probably 7 to 81 percent with start with one study, which uh, predicted reported a prostate cancer specific survival rate of 83 percent. So the factors that may indicate a salvage radical prostatectomy. This is just for information. Life expectancy of 10 years or longer. This patient is 74 years already. Three years treated radiation, so is about 75, 76 now. So not indicated for prostatectomy. PSA level under 10, again, low risk disease. So this patient had a high risk disease. Gleason score was also high, 8. And uh, no lymph node involvement, initial clinical staging of T1 and T2. None of these criteria fit for this patient. So he did not undergo radical prostatectomy. Like Amarnath sir has mentioned, radical prostatectomy has a lot of adverse reactions, increased risk of adverse reactions like fistulas and urinary retention compared to a primary rad radical prostatectomy. Next, moving to re-radiation. Uh, 
Dr. Parthasati, sir, your comments on radiation as a uh, treatment option. Yeah, actually, uh, first of all, we decide on which patients to treat and which patients to observe, uh, depending on their clinical scenario and their life expectancy. Suppose we uh, decide on to treat, uh, as you told, the first option, uh, as uh, rightly indicated, is radical prostatectomy. And uh, suppose he is not fit for radical prostatectomy, the other options comes into action. So the second option as a radiation oncologist, which I think about is re-radiation, definitely. And uh, it's always better not to irradiate a patient multiple times because the side effects will always be higher. But if at all he comes for irradiation, uh, the duration uh, I will expect a minimum of two years, uh, disease-free interval or disease in between the two radiation courses, a minimum of two years uh, uh, is expected. Now, is, uh, whether to give SBRT or whether to give brachytherapy. Now, brachytherapy is the most conformal form of SBRT or high-dose radiation therapy as far as uh, we all know. So, if uh, in a well-expertized uh, center, which is uh, technically very uh, good in brachytherapy and they are doing a prostate brachytherapy lots, uh, brachytherapy will give equal results. But also, uh, the case selection on brachytherapy is also important. Uh, Usually in few trials, they have shown the T3B or a Gleason core of more than eight. If you if we have such cases and you select for brachytherapy within a, a period of four, four, four and a half years, five years, they will uh, progress distantly. So they will be relapsing in other sites. So the although the local control is achieving 50% of the cases. So SBITs and uh, brachytherapy are equally good in good hands and there are many trials uh, in SBRT and a uh, few of the retrospective analysis in Brachy also where, the, where they give 36 gray in six fractions um, or 30 gray in uh, four fractions. And SBRT also same uh, dose protocols are used. Yes. So uh, I will, uh, the side effects profile has to be there. Definitely when you are giving radiation, uh, the, 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 the gastrointestinal, the genitive urinary toxicities, the erectile dysfunctions, definitely those are going to come. Any tumor which is very close to the urethra, brachytherapy is ideally not to be done because of the side effects. And yes. personally, if at all, if I have both the options, I'll prefer brachytherapy from my side. Thank you so much, uh, sir. So there is a systemic review uh, that has uh, taken all the studies which included brachytherapy and SBRT uh, included. And uh, they have considered together around 1,967 patients. The so low dose rate brachytherapy uh, studies showed that, like Sir was saying, minimum two years, so 70% in two years and 50% in five years relapse free survival. This is biochemical relapse free survival. HDR had similar 74% and 51%. And SBRT was about two year relapse, uh, biochemical relapse free survival was about 54.9. Like Sir also mentioned, the Toxicity is something that we need to consider because re-radiation is not an easy job. And uh, expertise is something that we also need to consider. In these studies, in this systemic review, toxicities were uh, more than grade 3 GU and GI toxicities were somewhere around the range between 6 to 10%. Moving on to bracket. Dr. Dr. Vijay, shall I add a point? Yes, uh, we don't have a consensus uh, when it comes to re-radiation and bracket therapy. Probably PSMA PET is the one which will save us at this point. Probably we can try to re irradiate only the PSMA abid area and get over with the toxicities is what because most of the trials what they have done is either uh, they have irradiated the entire prostate or uh, uh, along with the some annual cycles. So that is where I feel that when we are re irradiating, probably uh, is there anything that we can look into in, uh, going forward? Probably only irradiating the PSMA abid area and uh, get over with the toxicities. Yes, actually, uh, yeah, if, if I can add on to this, uh, actually there have been few brachytherapy trials also in which uh, we have uh, given a bit higher dose in the PSMA active area or the area where there is a, um, the GTB is seen in the prostate. So, in, and then the same, the dose painting IMRT if can also be tried in the SBRT if at all it is feasible, I think. Yes, yes, sir. So many of the studies in this systemic review, actually 90% of, of them, I would say, have used, uh, have given whole uh, prostate RT. Focal RT was given only in a few. And the SBRT that they have, uh, all the studies, SBRT studies in this, 90% again of them have used uh, CyberKnife. So PSMA directed or a multi-parametric directed MRI, uh, MRI directed treatment will definitely 
reduce this grade three toxicity that they are talking about, and especially with our uh, mat and uh, cyber knife technology, doing a focal treatment would would be very very beneficial in terms of toxicity. Doctor Vijay, please try to conclude. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. So I'll uh, skip this brachytherapy part. So next is uh, cry cryoablation. Uh, Doctor Vinay, sir, if you can just put in a sentence about cryoablation. Uh, definitely salvage cryo is an alternative uh, option post uh, RT. But uh, the only thing is five-year biochemical disease free survival after cryo are not so promising. And at the same time, it comes with uh, toxicity is again. Uh, but definitely we can consider it as an option uh, post RT as a, a local treatment. Yes, thank you for that. So yes, salvage liabilization, we need robust data, but there is enough data as of now to consider it as one of the options because it has a, a similar biochemical relapse-free survival compared to a re-radiation that is around 50%. Uh, moving on to salvage ADT, uh, Arun Lal, sir, if you can write, say a word about salvage ADT in this uh, patient with a local recurrence, considering the clinical <laughs> biochemical factor. Yeah. Would you do Actually, from your presentation, I didn't get how much time gap was there from the initial, uh, I mean, from the completion of hormone till the time we are actually talking about. Um, so, assuming it is 15 around, months. Pardon? 15, 15 months, uh, 16 15, months. 16 months. Uh, if, if this patient, see, in a, in a real world scenario, 99% out of 100 times, this patient will not be getting any other local treatment option. Most of us will be putting this patient only on hormone and uh, trying to keep an hormone for a maximum longer period of time. Even, even if at all I am thinking about any sort of local treatment, be it SPRT, be it breaky, I don't have exposure to HIPO or cryo. Still, I will be starting this patient on ADT for sure. So, for two that reasons. One, will be one, the first infection. Absolutely. So, so, I'll, I'll start him on the hormone. I will keep him on hormone for six hormones because any time that I am buying uh, from the time of my first radiation to my local treatment actually improves my uh, eventual toxicity outcome. So definitely we'll be started on uh, ADT for sure. Uh, at the end of six months, if some form of local treatment can be offered, that will be offered. They have to pull it to the occurrence as much as it is feasible. Thank you. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. So, the European Association of Oncology Prostate Cancer Guidance suggests this uh, stratification between... Sri Daya. Yes, sir. So, uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. I can hear you. So, yeah. so number one is... Uh, the definition of PSA bounds on a patient who is on hormones is, I think we need to check it out. PSA bounds is not usually mentioned in the patients who are already on a, uh, uh, hormones. It's only on a radiation, patients who are only exclusively low risk, only on radiation, PSA bounds to be done. That is number yes. one. Yes. Recurrence, local recurrence, when we are talking about the, if there's a recurrence, better with like Vinay has already told, that's what we do it. I've done around six cases. Only pet avid cases to be considered, only pet avidity. Duration of, uh, usually these patients, when you are taking about uh, uh, the low to intermediate risk prostate cancer, at least minimum two years, easily it goes on. Yes. Sir. And in terms of diagnosis, diagnosing a local recurrence, up to three years, if you do a, the biopsy in these cases, there may be chances of a residual disease even up to three years. So the residual prostate biopsy may not be the good idea to, to consider. It's mainly on the biochemical recurrence and the PSA and the PSMA PET scan to be considered to call it as a real local recurrence. Other one is we all talk about for a completion, say yes, the surgery, prostatectomy is one of the main things to be considered. At least I must have asked a lot of uh, uh, urosurgeons, none of them operate. Yes, sir. So yes. the choice of treatment should be, first should be, is always the re-RT should be the one because it always, if you go and ask the, the surgeon, they always refer the patient to medical oncology. They never done the surgery. Please keep that in mind. So the re-RT is a still a better choice. If you consider a re-RT in these cases, so then this PSA is only four. Think that his hormones was not given. So Mohan Lal told that like he would like to, to restart the hormones. It's still a local, local residual disease, local recurrence. In my case, probably I don't give hormones in these cases. That's what I did, did it for all these six cases, almost three to four years. 
whenever there's a the definition of a recurrence is i'm talking about only local recurrence anything which comes outside it becomes a metastatic that time you can consider for organs so we have a short dr vijay please con- dr vijay please conclude now it's 10 mm-hmm. minute over sir sridhar sir please summarize like please I, please summarize and conclude please okay sir sridhar sir i'll uh, talk to you about all this sir. so all that what you said i've mentioned and then in uh, clinical scenario radical prostatectomy is not done that i totally agree so as dis- as a part of the discussion the results wise radical prostatectomy has the best results in this situation prostate psa bounds again that i've just mentioned because the people are supposed to know about psa they bound for two months still the practice we do not do any patient on cost if you ask if they consider a biochemical recurrence they do not do a biopsy but there is evidence we said that can change the outcome that can uh, alter your so the other thing is uh, salvage priority whether early versus late there is uh, like sridhar sir was mentioning this is something that we need to consider uh, the risk stratification comes into play here in this patient with a high risk at presentation with the psa right now is not very high uh, it is only 4 uh, so you can if the patient is asymptomatic you can try and wait till the patient becomes symptomatic or he has a recurrence later metastatic recurrence later but uh, there is evidence retrospective studies which says there is no difference there is a toad study which says that there is a difference early is better than late there is no concluding evidence so you i usually decide based on the psa doubling time if it is an aggressive disease and less than 6 months intermittent versus continuous again there is not much evidence there is few studies which implemented better but i would uh, recommend only giving uh, continuous because intermittent was found to have more uh, toxicity in some situation uh, conclusion guidelines eau guidelines cryoablation which i few all of these are uh, indicated uh but uh, as per the discussion as per all my seniors who have mentioned here all these procedures are not usually followed and we move on to adt as a step so there is uh, ncc uh, coming last to the nccn guidelines with the psa recurrence with one stratification like i was uh, mentioning then they are also suggesting a biopsy to be done which again this is not to usually do consider imaging once the life expectancy more than 10 years options of bracket or radical less than 10 years adt or observation and then progression then you move on to next line of uh, adt or uh, castrate resident or castrate naive disease thank you